The next Democratic presidential contest may be five days away, but early caucusing is already underway in Nevada. 36 delegates are up for grabs. The latest poll shows Senator Bernie Sanders leading the field with a solid margin, but it is a candidate who is skipping the state that's continuing to make headlines. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg is facing new attacks from his rivals over the millions of dollars he's spending on his campaign. CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett has more. The American people are sick and tired of billionaires buying elections. Bloomberg's approach seeks to turn the nomination process, with its emphasis on early contests and momentum building, on its head. Jobs creator, leader, problem solver. He's on track to spend more than $415 million before Super Tuesday. That's when he'll be on ballots for the first time and where he hopes to vault into contention for the Democratic nomination. I think he cannot hide behind the airwaves and the money. Bloomberg is also facing criticism for his support of stop and frisk. He has apologized for the anti-crime tactic that allowed police to search suspects without a warrant. From 2011 to 2012, more than 80 percent of those stopped were black or Latino. Nearly 90 percent were found to be innocent. Sixty billion dollars can buy you a lot of advertising, but it can't erase your record. Bloomberg is also under fire for lawsuits filed over the years alleging that he created a culture of sexual harassment at his company. In a statement, the Bloomberg campaign responded, quote, Mike simply does not tolerate any kind of discrimination or harassment. We in our party hold ourselves to the highest standard, and it is going to be critical for us to have a nominee uh, who can authentically lead. Counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, seized on Bloomberg's past comments on stop and frisk. The philosophy was to castigate and denigrate well, people you, of color. Ignoring President Trump's support for the practice, which he advocated for in Chicago in 2018. Stop and frisk. It works, and it was meant for problems like Chicago. It was meant for it. Stop and frisk. Major Garrett joins us now from Washington with more. Uh, all right, Major, so just over a week ago, Democratic candidates were talking about unity. Now they are going after Michael Bloomberg. Of course, this is politics, but could the damage, uh, and could this damage, uh, the party's chances later in the year, especially given the fact that Mayor Bloomberg has committed to backing the eventual nominee if it's not him. So there's lots to sort out here, Vlad, and it is worth noting that that period of time it, leading up to the Iowa caucuses and the New Hampshire primary where Democrats really were not attacking each other and engaging each other on policy differences with any kind of aggressiveness was without precedent. It was an incredibly soft buildup to the Iowa caucuses and the New Hampshire primary, at least compared to primaries and caucuses I'd covered starting in 1992, when early on Democrats would use contrast ads and really hit each other on the stump. That wasn't happening, and that was all basically submerged, pressed down in the name of unity, this idea that Democrats didn't want or shouldn't say anything about each other that could not be forgotten or forgiven. Well, that all changed when it became clear that Mike Bloomberg's spending was making him much more than sort of an abstract concept in this race, but a real threat. And the Democrats running in Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina collectively looked at the polls and said, if we don't start talking about Mike Bloomberg, he might run away with this. So they did. Not only has opposition research showed up in journalistic articles, journalists have started going back looking at the Mike Bloomberg record, and it's now part of the conversation. So much so, and this is the other side of the equation, Vlad, it's kind of obscuring what the other candidates still in the race are doing. Bloomberg is kind of dominating the media cycle, much to his campaign's delight, even when it's negative publicity, because they know they're going to have to deal with these issues sooner or later, and if you deal with them sooner, you have a better chance of succeeding later. So all of these are fresh dynamics, and they are driven by this incredible amount of money that Michael Bloomberg has spent. It's also worth pointing out, 415 million so far before Super Tuesday. No delegates assembled by the Bloomberg campaign. Donald Trump, when he ran in 2016, spent 70 million. He's president of the United States. Mm. Uh, Major, let me ask you about uh, uh, African American voters. Uh, as you pointed out in the piece, there are uh, new questions being raised about uh, former Mayor Bloomberg's stop and frisk policy. Um, 
Senator Klobuchar has had issues that we've covered here at CBS News with sentencing when she was a prosecutor. Uh, Mayor Buttigieg has had issues with local law enforcement um, in, in South Bend. Uh, and Vice President Biden and Senator Sanders both voted for the crime bill, which has had problems, which a lot of African Americans have called into question. Is there, so in other words, I know that this, uh, these questions are being raised about Mayor Bloomberg, but all of these candidates have issues at some point or another have had issues with mm -hmm. uh, African-American voters. Um, and so I wonder how it's being perceived within the party as we move ahead to the debates. Well, it's a real debate because in South Carolina, 60 percent of the electorate, if you look at recent exit polls, will be African-American, 55 percent women. Now, the women component we'll get to in a second, but for African-American voters, they have a choice to make. And Joe Biden was running strong in South Carolina for a very long time because of his longstanding respect within the African-American community and serving for eight years as Barack Obama's vice president. That support has begun to erode because Biden has so spectacularly underperformed in Iowa and New Hampshire. He needs a solid showing in Nevada to come into South Carolina with anything approximating momentum. All the rest of these campaigns, there's either skepticism or a great void of information about what they would do and what their relatability is within the African-American community. All of them are trying to test that out in real time and in a hurry. Mike Bloomberg, interestingly, next to former Vice President Biden, has the highest number of endorsements from African-American political figures. So because he was a mayor of America's most important city, we say that all the time, he has visibility on lots of issues, not just stop and frisk. And mayors know what mayors do, how they accomplish, how they build teams, how they work in, let us say, less partisan ways, not nonpartisan ways, but less partisan ways. And all of this is part of what Bloomberg advertises he brings to the race. Not only problem solving, less partisanship, but the support of mayors who also watched him function in New York City. That's been helpful to his campaign. But all of this is untested and South Carolina is a huge jump ball in a very fluid situation because either there's skepticism, downright hostility, or just a great unknown. Uh, what can you tell us, Major, about Senator Bernie Sanders and the pushback that he's facing from the culinary union in Nevada over his health care plans? Uh, what impact could that have on his chances in the state? A couple things to say about the Nevada caucuses on Saturday. First of all, if you talk to anyone with any experience with the Nevada caucuses, they're notoriously hard to poll for. So I'd be very, very reluctant to embrace as definitive any polling data that comes out of Nevada. Second of all, they're working a different process this year. Early voting started on Saturday. That will change some of the dynamic here. But clearly Sanders has some momentum. He won the popular vote in Iowa, didn't win the delegate count there, but he won the popular vote in New Hampshire, so he arrives in Nevada with a good deal of at least perceived momentum. But this issue, this clash with the culinary union, which has more than 100,000 members, it's the most important union, it represents many of those who work in the hotel industry in Las Vegas, clearly a sizable constituency. Basically, the culinary union said, we're not going to endorse in this Nevada caucus. However, we are going to point out in a pamphlet given to our members that if Medicare for all were to become the law of the land, culinary workers would lose the private insurance that they have negotiated for and fought hard to achieve. Sanders campaign supporters were incensed by that and so incensed that they attacked in vicious, vulgar, profane, and often, and sometimes, not often, but sometimes threatening ways, leaders within the culinary union. This has created a backlash in Nevada, and if there's anything that Bernie Sanders has to deal with as the caucuses approach on Saturday, it is this simmering sense that some of his supporters are not just enthusiastic, not just passionate, but vicious, cruel, hateful people. And there's a Mike Bloomberg digital ad that just went up today bringing light to this problem. Joe Biden has talked about it. Others have made glancing references to it. It's something to watch as the Nevada caucuses approach. Yeah, you're right, Major. Uh, I note that former Vice President Biden did make a comment about it on Sunday, uh, on making his rounds on the Sunday talk shows, uh, saying that uh, Senator Sanders does bear uh, some accountability for the way uh, some of his supporters behave online. And it's not just that, it's the speed with which he does it. He waited more than 24 hours to wade into any of this controversy in Nevada. And for those within the Culinary Union senior leadership, they observed that that was awfully late in the process to even start saying something about this. All right. Major Garrett for us. Thank you, Major.